Right, hello, I'm Debs. This is Debs Made This. Welcome. Today we have something a bit different. This is Swimwear with Debs, part one. Fabric and pattern. Right, hello. Thanks to everybody who's liked and subscribed and left me little comments. It's very lovely. Um, I need to say some swimwear. I swim all the year round in the UK. I only wear a swimming costume. Uh, I like sewing swimwear and I thought you might like to come along on the journey with me. So today is part one. We are doing the fabric that's in my stash, the patterns that I already own. Sorry, looking over there because I can see some of them. Um, and then I'm gonna we're going to go through the process and see what happens. Now, I do have a cover stitch machine. Um, I don't always use it. Uh, I do have an overlocker, which you can see behind me, and I have um, a FAF IDT machine but you can sew swimwear with just your normal standard machine and a zigzag stitch you don't need anything more fancy than that so uh, if that's something that interests you we'll crack on with the piece of fabric that started all this which is a um bit of a lovely one so this is how nice is this so this came from wattle and slate wattle and slate um, so I hadn't used them before. They do print your own fabric. So you choose your base and you choose your pattern. And then about three months later, magically, the um, fabric comes through the door. So this is um, a swimwear fabric. It's got a couple of rainbows on it and a blue background. So um, whatever I make with it, I'll need to just think about the pattern placement of this um, and whether I have that across the chest and across my bottom. Um, tell me what you think about rainbow bottoms in the uh, text box down below. Now, the only caveat to this, so when this came, it's kind of heathered, whether you'll be able to see that, but it's heathered in colour um, rather than being a pure colour, which I think will help it. But what it is printed on is a white background. So sometimes when you stretch, I don't know if you can see that as well as I can see it, when you stretch, you get that kind of white shine through. Um, now, most of my swimming costumes, the reason I'm remaking is because my size has changed in the last couple of years. Um, so I'm hopeful that there won't be too much stretch across certain areas. But you obviously do need your swimwear to fit because it increases in size a bit when it gets wet. So we don't want anything, um, any wardrobe bound functions happening. Now, I've never had that happen. I haven't ever had that happen. So I'm sure it's going to be fine. I just, um, I just need to keep that in mind. The other thing to note is when you do print... In advance, you get this kind of, I want to say unusable area, but I'm sure that I can think of a way to use it. Um, I used to use it when I was being really thrifty. I used to put use it instead of um, clear elastic in to stabilise shoulder seams on knit garments, but um, I'm not sure. I can't remember the last time I did that, which is very naughty, isn't it? Anyway, so that is fabric number one, the rainbow fabric. Fabric number two is super cute. This is a... I think this came from Sew Me Sunshine, which is a lovely shop. It's really nice quality jersey. And you can see if I stretch these little whales, they don't get that white show through in the same way at all, despite the fact that it is a kind of a pale background. It's just a, it's a better stretching material. So you can see I have got these little whales. So I just have to think about print. Gosh, I couldn't say that. Then print placement, print placement. Um, to make sure that they're all swimming the right way up. Um, and I've got a meter of that, but it is super wide. So I think um, I'll probably get two garments out of that, I would think, unless I do a rash vest or something. But um, I don't very often sew those um, for myself, sometimes for the kids, but not for me. The next one is one that came from the lovely Gem at Bobbins and Bolts. Now, Gem used to have an in-person fabric shop in Harrogate, and she doesn't now. She just does online. But uh, if she's got some of this left, um, I'll link it because this is my most recently bought. Just making sure I'm not fibbing apart from that first one. Uh, most recently bought um, swimwear, and I've made um, I've made a sandpiper in this. So look at that. So it's like reeds and bubbles and it's very under the sea. I'm trying not to cuddle the fabric because the um, Friday shows last week, I'd got lots of crackling where I kept cuddling the fabric into the microphone. So I'm really sorry. I'm trying very hard. So that's why I keep kind of getting stuck. Um, so this is um, it's a really nice base, really stretchy, good recovery. 
super wide and I've got tons of this still left so I dare say that there will be something else will come out of this and it, and it wears beautifully and um, the main issue with the sandpiper that I made before was related to the arms eye so I know what to do with that now Let myself a look at this this is Liberty Swimwear look how pretty that is so it's really lovely. It's really floral and bright and beautiful. Um, so this has been in my stash for about three years, I think, waiting to be made up. It's not quite the longest swimwear. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but this has been waiting to be made up. And I think I probably have got a plan for this. I will show you my series of patterns that I was already possess in a little minute. And you can see which one of those you um, you think uh, would be nice for it and uh, actually I, I have two in my head that would work really well this is a, it's it's more drapey this it's more kind of lightweight um but again stretches really nicely it's a really nice base it's really interesting to me how different the bases are and how different in weight the bases are um i made something out of um liberty swimwear before so i've got an opium pilatus which i'll show you, show you the pattern in a minute in this, this is my, what I've got left over. Um, and this is a Liberty Swimwear, how gorgeous is that? And that has been worn and washed and worn and washed. I think I made it in 2018 and it was still being worn this year, although it's a little bit snug around the bottom. Um, but I've still got enough of that to probably eke something out of it, even if it's only kind of half, I'll do a color blocked version. So that's why that's kept. So this one's lovely. This is the longest living swimwear fabric in my collection. Um, this came from a company called Funky Fabrics, who are based in the UK, who, again, you choose the base, you choose the print, and they create it for you. And every time I come to sew this, I get the heebie-jeebies because I really, really, really like it. And it's now been in my stash, I think, might be 2016 or 2017 this that's quite a long time isn't it so this one might have to go on the cutting mat first i think <sighs> do you get that thing where you're gonna sew some fabric that you've had for a long time you have to be careful don't you that things don't go into too precious to use because it's no use to anybody if it's sitting in a box underneath my sideboard um they need to be worn, especially when it's for things that I actually do wear all the time. So you can see that the the kind of wave pattern of this, I could have going across or I could have it going down. There's a couple of them that have of the pans that I'm looking at that have either got a tie or a little knot at the front. So I think having the waves coming into that little knot would be really nice. I think it's really interesting thinking about print placement and we'll do that when we're doing cutting out but that's that's the things that go through your head is where does this stripe end where does that stripe end where does the pattern echo in the in the garment so that you get you get balance through it those kinds of things finish i've got a plane now this isn't officially swimwear this is italian matte lycra which came from fabworks mill which if you don't know them please go and have a look because they are a phenomenal company um, they're not too far from me. They're about 45 minutes away. And I currently have in my back pocket, well, not actually in my back pocket, being honest with you, I'm saving for a rainy day. I've got a 50 pound voucher that I had for my birthday earlier this year. Um, and as things are getting a bit tight money wise, I'm kind of holding on to that in case I have an emergency need for fabric, um, which might well occur, as you very well know. Right. So this is, look at the color of this so beautiful so this is italian matte like it's got a beautiful stretch to it and because i'm not swimming in chlorine because i'm swimming in fresh water in the main and occasionally in salt water um i mean i do sometimes go to the swimming pool but not very often at all um but the chlor that doesn't mean i don't get the chlorine damage that you get from being in a swimming pool so it's less of a thing the main damage to my my fabrics normally comes from hanging them out to dry because I always forget and just stick them on the line. Um, and most of these fabrics don't really like the sunshine. And the only other thing that's wafted about is this, which is, this was just really to show you the difference. So this is a nylon that I picked up from eBay, which was sold as swimmer, but is very stretchy. It's kind of got too much stretch almost really. Um, and so produces a fairly gathered effect. It's kind of fairly loose hanging. Um, so it doesn't have the quite the right properties to make swimwear with. But what I often do is to make a toile in this to check fit. Um, 
that's often quite tricky to do because um as you've seen the bases are really different they hang really differently so actually the only time you really know how it's going to fit is when you make the real thing um you can obviously do like your standard adjustments um but yeah you only know proofs in the pudding it's a bit like making jeans it's only with the same fabric right so pattern number one and probably my favorite pattern to date is the opium pilatus so this is a swimsuit that thinks it's a bikini so it has two sections it has a top section and a bottom section there's a gap this is a gap at the back so you can see the top and the bottom are joined at the back by these kind of bridging posts and the same at the front so that means you've got a lot of fit wriggle and um, it also means you can color block to your heart's consent but what you do have to think about with this is the tie because whatever's on the inside will end up showing on the outside and i'll show you that in the next one um, this is a really, I like this pattern a lot. I, um, the ones that I made, the Liberty one I made in the Pop Splash, whatever that fabric's called, um, I'll put a picture in here, but I've worn that in locks, I've worn it in rivers, I've worn it in the sea. Um, and it's just, it's really easy to get on and off. The only problem with it is because if you put it on before you go swimming, um, you have a big knot there. So if you put dungies or something on over the top, it looks a bit odd, but um, that's the only kind of caveat with it. So that's a super pattern. Um, I think she's recently increased her size range. Well, I will find and put the new size range of these patterns here. Um, she's uh, lives in Switzerland and historically her, her pattern uh, size range was very narrow so but it has definitely increased recently number two pattern and i have one of these which has lemons on which i will promise i will show you next time is this which is the sea bright swimmer from the friday pattern company and i made one um with arms in it and um you can see from the line drawings that it has a very 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 deep v and so I have got a little clasp that goes across the front. You, the, it, the instructions give you a tie that you can use. But in winter, if you swim in cold water, um, I have Raynaud's. So my hands go cold very easily, get cold very easily and don't work so well. Um, and even my friends who don't have Raynaud's, by the time you've been in very cold water for some time, your hands are not very functional. So ties is not very useful. So this little clip that I've got is very helpful. I'm planning definitely to make another one of these. I've really enjoyed wearing it. The only difficulty with it is because it's got long sleeves, it can be a bit of a wriggle to get it on and off. I find that's worse in salt water than fresh water, but I don't know why. So presumably there's some kind of molecular explanation for it, but it might just be that my skin's a bit salty. Number three in my pattern arsenal, is the Sandpiper Swim Soap by Helen's Closet. Now I've just made one of these before and I don't know quite why I haven't made another one. I think because I had some problems with the arms eye on this, I did adjust it, um, but it's still not quite right. I think it just needs a little bit more of a tweak. Um, I'm also intending to make um, some active wear tops just in this with a little bit more length to it so you can have a wide band or a narrow band and again with the bottoms a wide band or a narrow band um, I think she does a lower rise version as well and um, this is a super pattern her instructions are fabulous as always I am a huge advocate of Helen Closet's patterns they're fantastic and um, I've just made what the dungarees called the ruby overalls in a rainbow fabric so you'll get to see those at some point I'm sure um, but again, she just, yes, yeah, she just writes a really good pattern. So, um, yes, yeah, so I've got plans for an active wear version of this, but also a swimwear version of this. Number four is the North Shore swimsuit. Now, this is um, a Green Style Creations pattern. Now, they make really good patterns with lots of variations. Look at the number of variations that there are on that. Now, I have made this swimsuit. I think that's right but no other variations at the moment. Um, so there's plenty of scope to do some more. The main problem I had with this is because I'm really short-waisted, actually the distance between the top and the bottom for me on the standard pattern is actually too wide. So they're kind of um, come very close together because there's almost, there's, there's too much space for them to, I'm not saying this very well. It doesn't fit me very well. It needs an adjustment. Um, so which makes me want to make it again to make the adjustment but where the gaps are so there's gaps kind of just where you I tend to hold a bit of extra weight which is not a problem you know it's my body I'm quite happy with it but I don't really want bits of me poking out of holes 
as things go. I'm kind of happier with a bikini. I don't know why that is. It's bizarre, isn't it? Anyway, so the cutout trend in swimwear is not really for me. We've got one more that I've made and two that I haven't made. So the one that I've made is the Signate. So this was made by Harry Ito Designs in collaboration with Small Bobbins, who's an underwear um shop underwear what do I mean notion shop so I've made this one with the scooped out back before and I'll show you it next time um but it's a really nice pattern this now I made the mistake of making this shorter so I because I'm short body said what I normally do is to reduce the height of a pattern by a couple of centimeters easily so I did this um alteration I took away a centimeter here and a centimeter here and essentially it's too short so it fits, but I just need a little bit more room. So I've got the pattern adjusted and ready to go. So that one's going to be very soon. And then I have two that I haven't made yet. So one is the five out of four patterns Laura swimsuit. And this is like a top and a dress and look at all those options. I do find though sometimes when there's like so many options, just get a bit overwhelmed and then don't end up making any of them. But that's just probably my busy brain. I really like this shape. And I really like this cosy. So that's probably going to be what I'm making. Now, I might not make this for winter because I would end up with clips on the back. And as we've just talked about with fingers, you just have to, I just have to kind of bear in mind how I'm going to get in and out because I might be by myself and I might be somewhere and my fingers are not working. And the final one is one I have made before, but not for me. So this is the Reno. And I think the bottoms are called Dakota from Seamwork. So I was a Seamwork member when I first started sewing, so maybe seven years, 2016 perhaps. Um, and I loved their patterns and then they changed their block and it just didn't fit me. I had to do a lot more to try and make them fit. So um, I have made this, made this for my daughter um, and she wore it loads. Actually, I only made her a toile in some just plain royal blue swimwear fabric and she wore it until it fell to pieces. So she wore it loads. Um, so that's the other one that's floating about, which is quite nice to make. And it would be a nice segue into bra making because it's got proper kind of cut lines and things, which I think is quite helpful. Now, I probably have got other patterns in my stash, but my um, keep everything on an Excel spreadsheet and then on the OneDrive. So in my swimwear file, that's that's the ones that I've got that are appealing to me at the moment. So that's what you've got to see. So I hope that was interesting. Um, and I will aim to record the one where I've got all my swimwear in and then put these up together. And if I manage to do that, I will insert a doodle, ticket, clip, whatever thing up there showing Deb's swimwear. Um, and I hope that's OK. So I'm hoping this is going to be fun. I mean, I'm going to be doing it anyway. So I just thought I may as well take you along with me and you could kind of uh, have the fun because I'm I'm guessing that most of the people who live in the Northern Hemisphere are not currently going to be sewing swimwear. Uh, my other plan is that I'm going to do a shirt series in a very similar style, which I've kind of started. Um, oh, and I'm, I hadn't said what I'm wearing. So I am wearing an I Am Hermes shirt in uh, cream linen that I think came from Rainbow Fabrics, but I might be fibbing. Um, there was an issue with this fabric actually it wasn't cut straight and I ended up losing about 25 centimeters off it but I pointed it out to them and they sorted it out so good on them excellent customer services service from Rainbow Fabrics oh and I'm also wearing my pearl so this is my green pearl it came from Corrie's what's she called Corrie's Fancy Glue so she's a sewist she lives in Wales I'll link her down below and this was my present so Corrie Put these up and I didn't get them the first time but it was just about to be my 50th birthday so I promised myself that I would have one when she made them again and she has just made them again and I am very pleased with my green pearl and um, so like I say I shall link her shop down below so that's all I've got for now um, I shall see you next time when you get to see all my swimming cozies and then the time after that we'll be going on the cutting and sewing journey so i hope that's been helpful if you've enjoyed it please like and if you want to see what i'm up to subscribe okay bye for now